Backlash is probably one of the first things that a machinist needs to learn about, not only what it is, but how to deal with it. For example, here on the carriage of this lathe, you can see as the direction of feed is changed, there is some play or backlash. Up higher on the cross slide and the compound, we are graduated in one thousandths of an inch, as indicated right here. If we move in one direction, stop on zero then we can move it until it engages and we can see that we have about a little less than four thousandths of an inch backlash before we talk about how to deal with backlash let's talk about what backlash actually is probably a good way to describe it is the play or slop between two mechanical parts that engage each other for example, this is a feed screw. If we look very closely, we can wiggle this nut right on the feed screw. That's because they are not perfectly engaged. There is a little bit of room between the threads. So believe it or not, this is by design. Without backlash, mechanical devices could bind up and break themselves. The cause of backlash can be easily explained with a simple diagram. Here are some threads, and here's the threads that engage. Now, typically when threads engage, they don't bottom out on each other. They look something like this. So you can see that there is some clearance between the threads. And when we start feeding this direction, we're going to encounter backlash where there is movement of this part, but not of our part up top. Now we've made contact. If we continue feeding this direction, we will have smooth movement we've taken up the backlash. Where you're going to see backlash again is when you reverse direction. You start coming this way, we're encountering the backlash, and there we've taken it up, and now our upper part will start moving smoothly. Now, some backlash is important because binding will occur if all of this stuff was perfect and tight, plus you need room for lubricant to be in between the two mechanical interfaces. Let's take a look at other potential causes of backlash. If we look at the feed on this mini mill, which is graduated in thousandths of an inch, and we set it to a given number, and we move it backwards until it engages, we can see right there that we have six thousandths of an inch of backlash. Now, this particular unit's been giving me a lot of problems. The little nut here that holds this on has a tendency to come loose. And when that happens, we've got play there. Now, if we go and we pick up our slack, we've taken up the backlash, we stop there, then you can see going back, now we have about 26, 27 thousandths of an inch of backlash. That's pretty extreme. So this goes to show how there are other things that can affect backlash, such as this little nut here, the tightness of the handle. A simple fix for this is a second nut that's supposed to be on there to keep the first one from backing off. Another source of play can be easily represented by looking at how our feed screw nut interfaces to our device simply with a screw. That screw is loose and that results in play of this whole nut. And that's also going to result in play during movement. So checking your machines for things as simple as that is another good way to reduce backlash and fine tune things. Once you understand backlash, Working with it is simple. Let's say that we want to move 10 thousandths in that direction, but here we've got our backlash to deal with. What we will first do is we'll move in the opposite direction, and then now we're going to move in the direction of travel, and right there we've just removed our backlash. From this point forward our readings on the graduated dial will be accurate, and we can go ahead and now take our ten thousandths and we know that that's truly what we got. Now if we started here 
and I just turned in the opposite direction and we tried to cut ten thousandths well we just lost four thousandths to backlash and our cut is now only six thousandths the same concept goes for milling if you want your readings to be accurate in that direction first you move in the opposite direction and then reverse to take up the backlash and at that point you can make your cuts one thing to keep in mind is making cuts that will fight against your direction of feed here's a very simple example on the mill let's say this is your feed screw and this represents the table and our piece of work that we're cutting now here we have taken up the slack so we're in contact here we're feeding that direction everything's good and our cutter is turning like this and life is good we're milling well what if we were feeding the opposite direction well then the cutter would be interfacing like this and when it bites down right here it's going to want to yank this workpiece forward in the direction of travel and because we've got this play right here it's able to do that which means now we've introduced some instability to our work now simply planning your cuts so that the cutter is moving against the direction of travel is the way to compensate and avoid that on most devices you're going to want to have at least a couple thousandths inch of backlash and as mentioned previously that's to allow room to prevent binding and to allow lubricants into the space between the mechanical interfaces and remember even large amounts of backlash which can be the result of worn parts can be easily dealt with as long as you get used to taking up the backlash and planning your cuts accordingly there's a lot more that can be said about backlash but I feel that this covers the basic principles and should give you a good understanding of what you're dealing with and how to work around it take care and be safe